David Pfefferman here from Carnivorous Plant Resource and Pfeff's Fantastical Botanicals. I want to start by wishing you all a happy World Carnivorous Plant Day and I'm going to take you on a little tour of my Saracenia garden. We're gonna check out some plants, learn some basic growing tips, maybe a few advanced growing tips, and you're gonna learn how to uh, grow big healthy happy North American pitcher plants. So follow me. So it's April 10th and a bit of a gloomy day here in Southern California. The plants are just kind of coming out of dormancy, building up steam for the season. They have a little coloring up to do, but pitcher growth is off to a good start so far. So let's make our first pit stop here. Dormancy, what is dormancy? Well, Saracenia or North American pitcher plants as they're commonly called, are temperate plants and they have a winter dormancy. They effectively take a nap for the season between the months of, let's say, um, October, November, and uh, January, February, that sort of time frame. So what happens during this period? Pitchers from the prior spring and summer seasons will die back. They'll start to see browning and crisping of the pitcher. It's totally normal. Your plant is completely healthy and it's just doing what comes naturally to it. And some plants will actually produce these secondary leaves that are non-carnivorous. These are called phyllodia, and they're really just there to photosynthesize and produce some, uh, some energy for the plant while it takes a nap for the season. Cool, so that's kind of what's gonna happen to your plant and what you should expect. Now, how do you care for your plant during dormancy? Let's step over here. <clears throat> here we have a plant that's a little farther along for the season. Um, you can see it's already got some really great pitcher growth on it but there's still some old stuff left from the prior seasons. You can tell it's a bit worn and torn here. In fact, you can see where I've done some, some trimming already. So that's a good segue, trimming. What do you wanna do with all that old growth from the last season? Some folks will say, kind of grab all the old growth and literally just kind of mow it down to the crown of the plant or the growth point where all the pitchers emerge from. I, however, take a slightly different approach. I leave on anything that's green because my hypothesis is that the plant will use that to photosynthesize and produce energy so that they can come roaring back to life in the spring, healthier and happier. Um, on top of that, I have a little hack where I'm actually able to sort of fertilize the plants in the off season by leaving old pitcher growth on. And I'll, I'll get to that in a minute at one of our next stops. Okay, so you either cut back all the pitchers or you leave pitchers on. I have heard the hypothesis that if you cut back the pitchers, uh, you'll get earlier spring growth, meaning the plants will come out of dormancy sooner than if you leave the pitchers attached. I haven't tested that hypothesis, but uh, give it a shot and let me know what you find. Let your soil dry out a little more than usual during winter so that you don't get any kind of rot or things like that during the winter. If you live in a very cold climate, feel free to mulch the plants to give them a little extra protection. And if you live in a warm climate, don't worry about it. The plants will just kind of take care of themselves. So during dormancy is the best time to repot and divide your Saracenia. Um, you're going to take a plant if you want to repot it. And I'm not going to do this live because it's a little late in the season now, but you'll take a plant, unroot it or unpot it, I should say, clean off the root system and then grab those crowns. Um, what I demonstrated on the other plant as the growth points and just tear them apart. Make sure there's roots attached to all of the crowns that you divide and then feel free to start potting them up. So what does potting look like? I've got some soil here, some pre-mixed soil. It's about a 60-40 mix of peat, mot, uh, peat moss excuse me, to perlite and um, you're going to want to moisten it wet it down and fill it up to about the top of the pot. This is a little low just for demonstration purposes. You're gonna to wanna to carve out a little area in the center and drop your roots right in there and then tuck the soil around it snugly, but not too compactly. Um, and that's really it, right? Do not forget to label your plants because if you do, you'll forget what you put in there, where you got it, when you got it, and it will just end up in the chaos. So pro tip label all your plants when you can. All right, um, let's continue on. 
So, what else can you do during dormancy? I like to do some preventative uh, pesticides. Now, pesticides is kind of a dirty word. Um, I don't like to use things that harm sort of the local wildlife. So uh, during winter, the only thing that I use when it's not necessary is Bacillus thuringiensis. So this is a bacterial-based pesticide that targets very specific insects. It's only bad for caterpillars, for instance. Um, I have caterpillars that sometimes like to gnaw holes in my pitchers or in my rhizomes, and they can do a lot of damage or even kill young plants. So this is a great preventative to make sure that um, you don't get caterpillars that, that destroy your collection. Uh, one other thing that I is worth noting <clears throat> is that uh, you can get mealybug. That's another common pest with Saracenia. I don't have any right now, but if you walk in here, I can kind of show you where they would normally live. Sort of at the crowns, in between growth points, in between pitchers, they'll literally just nestle themselves right in these nooks and crannies everywhere. And they'll just drain your plants dry, right? They'll chew on your plants, do a ton of damage. They look like little white kind of almost fuzzy balls that uh, get scattered throughout the growth points. If you have mealy, I do suggest a systemic pesticide, which is a little more hardcore than uh, Bacillus thuringiensis. It actually gets absorbed by your plants and turns your plants into effectively a, a poisonous thing for insects to snack on. Um, so that'll definitely take care of them. And you want to repeat that probably a couple times to make sure that you get not only the insects that are alive at that point in time, but also sort of future generations that might be um, in eggs and things like that in the soil. So, um, but do be aware that something more intense like a systemic pesticide, um, you know, isn't great for the environment. So use it sparingly. So what's the next stop here? Well, I alluded earlier to a little hack that I have around leaving pitchers on dormant plants. Uh, I like to fertilize my Saracenia. I get really great, big, healthy growth early in the season if I make sure that I'm fertilizing pitchers from last season. Um, so what does that look like, right? You know, a lot of people think that fertilizing carnivorous plants is a no-no and um, you're going to end up killing your plants if you do that, but uh, you just have to do it sparingly and carefully. So I use a mix of urea-free orchid fertilizer and a seaweed-based uh, uh, fertilizer, in this case, Max C. I mix them at, at parts about 50-50 and at about three quarters strength of the recommended strength. I then load it into something like this sprayer here. And I actually just do foliar feeding. So I, I fill pitchers about a quarter to a third of the way. Any higher than that, and you run the risk of the pitcher getting top heavy and then tilting over to dump the liquid. And when that happens, sometimes they don't spring back. So you'll wanna make sure that you only fill them sparingly. And as I alluded to earlier, sort of last season's pitchers, you can actually fill some of these guys up and that helps gives the plants or at least I find it helps gives the plants a little boost come springtime um, they start off really really strong and uh, if you can keep the new pitchers fertilized you can keep the momentum going of course plants being outside they catch a lot of their own natural insects but I have such a high density of plants here that I find a little extra fertilizing goes a long way um, so filling pitchers I also do foliar feeding so literally just kind of hosing down some of the pitchers. Um, and what happens is these stomata cells on the leaf surface will open up uh, during warmer conditions. And some of that fertilizer will actually get absorbed by the leaf itself by entering through those openings. You'll notice too, I'm not super picky about where the fertilizer goes. So um, I overspray onto the soil and I find that a little bit, just a hint of soil fertilizing also goes a long way. But be careful with that because you can burden the root systems and harm your plant. You'll start to get crispy leaves. That's the first sign you're over fertilizing. And then if you keep going, they'll just, they'll just die. <laughs> so sparingly, carefully, and um, probably not at full strength. All right, so you've cared for your Saracenia during winter dormancy. You've fertilized them. 
and you've cleaned them up. So if you've done everything well and the plants are of the appropriate age, if they're old enough, they should flower for you in the spring. So here we have some flowers that I've left on my plants. Um, what can you do with these? I mean, one, they're beautiful, so you can admire their beauty. But two, you can actually make crosses or hybrids with these flowers. If you want, you can even self-pollinate a given flower um, and uh, produce seed, right? So a lot of the plants in the collection are crosses that I've made from taking genetic material from one plant that I like and then mixing it in with another plant to get, you know, to select for traits that I like within different plants. So how do you do this? Let's take a close look at this flower here. If you open it up, peel back the petals on the flower, you'll see that there's all these little grains at the base of the underside of this style. This is all the pollen that's been dropped by the stamens or the male portion of the plant. You can literally just pick it all up on a paintbrush, like so. You can see the pollen on that paintbrush there. And then you find the female part of the plant or the stigma. The stigma is this little nub right here on the underside of the style. There's about five of these on most flowers and you literally just paint the pollen right on the stigma. Some plants have more or less than five. It really just depends. And for best seed set, you're gonna wanna do it to all five of the stigmas. Cool, so let's say you've done that successfully, what happens? Behind all of the, uh, the uh, whoop, behind all of the, um, the pollen in there, there is this little pod at the top of the flower. So this is what a seed pod looks like. If you've pollinated the plant correctly, this will swell up throughout the season and come fall, um, sometimes around like October or so, uh, they will start to turn brown and they'll eventually even crack open. So you want to get them right when they're turning brown so that they don't crack open and drop their seeds. But if you've pollinated correctly, you get these seeds. Now, this is a plant that I left to be open pollinated. So natural bees and pollinators in the environment pollinated this. So it's not a great seed set. Um, but, you know, if you leave your flowers on, even if you don't pollinate them yourself, you may get a surprise at the end of the season. How do you take care of these seeds? You simply remove them, put them in a moist paper towel, and drop them in the refrigerator for two to three months. This is called stratification. And what it does is it wears down a hydrophobic coating on the surface of the seed, which makes it much easier for them to germinate in warmer conditions in the springtime. So once you've done that, sow the seed just on the surface of uh, a mixture of soil, like what I mentioned earlier. And um, yeah, given warm conditions and good sunlight, you'll have some baby pitcher plants growing in no time. And as you can see, I've got plenty of those, <laughs> probably more than I should. So that's kind of Saracenia care in a nutshell, right? Um, the plants are super rewarding to grow. They put on a beautiful display in spring, summer months, and then, you know, Leucophila will put on a beautiful display more so in the fall, but you can see we're even getting some spring action here. Um, and yeah, uh, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to reach out to me. Again, my name is David Pfefferman. I manage Carnivorous Plant Resource and I manage Pfeff's Fantastical Botanicals. So please do not hesitate to reach out on social media and have yourselves a, a wonderful World's Carnivorous Plant Day. The International Carnivorous Plant Society wants you to be successful with your plants. We welcome growers just getting started all the way through professional scientists. We started an annual World Carnivorous Plant Day to celebrate these spectacular plants. Take a look around our website and you'll find historic documents about carnivorous plants, growing guides, free educational resources, and more. Have questions? Ask. We don't bite. But our plants do.